right, so what, what were some of your thoughts when you started? Did it take you back anywhere? Or? Yes. Uh, what were some of your thoughts? Anybody? Yes. It made me feel happy. Made you feel happy. Anyone else? All right, so one thing cognitive tries to do through the rehearsal and connecting the, the short-term memory with the long-term memory, and we all know that that develops what? The coding, correct? And so with that in mind, you, you take different simple things that they can connect with. And with that, it's not like they study for a test one day and then they know all the answers and forget. But this helps them remember it forever, all right? Okay, so many other ways that we might not even recognize that we um, support our students through information processing. When we do things like gaining the attention of our students, how many of us use cues? Or we use, uh, we move around the room with voice inflections to get our kids to. That's, a, that's a one a way that we can help support our students in the classroom with information processing. Um, another way, how do we show students how to, the way that we show students how to chunk um, related information? We present, we tend to present information in categories. We um, teach um, induction, re inductive reasoning. So let me ask you, and we just talked about it with repetition. How, what are some ways that you provide students with um, strategies for repetition, repetition of learning? What are some ways that you, what are some strategies that you use in your classroom for repetition of learning? You can just pop one out. Like the warm up, like spiral reviews. Spiral reviews. Mm -hmm. Say the word, spell the word, say the word. Say word, spell it, say it. And it's in their mind, right? By the time they're telling them, do we say that? Okay, say the ticket. Exit tickets. Sponge. <laughs> Sponge activities. Multiplication flashcards. Flashcards, it's repetition. We're constantly giving to them. So um, it, they're processing that and they're going through. So it states information in a principle several times in different <coughs> ways that we present it to them. We differentiate it, we give it to them in different ways until, they, until it's taken in their long-term memory. So there are things that we're doing in the classroom now that <coughs> definitely contribute to information processing. And as I alluded to earlier, even with students going through the writing process, um, it's a process that they have to go through in order to um, to really complete that assignment or to um, really gather or, or um, keep that information in their long-term memory. Okay, so our theory, as we shared earlier, was cognitive information processing. And if you really want to liken it to anything, liken it to a computer um, that we are processing and there are procedures and processes that we use to um, commit things to long-term memory. Do we have questions about the theory? 